Howdy y'all, Bryce here, playing a very special demo. This is Arcade Spirits from our good friend, Enna, aka Backseat Gaming Bros, over at twitch.tv uh, slash Backseat Gaming Bros, and Two Flower. Uh, they so graciously gave me access to this demo a little early. It comes out for everybody on Wednesday. I'm checking it out Monday morning. Um, but just to let y'all know kind of what this game is about, it takes place in an alternate 20XX timeline, heavily inspired by the arcade culture of the 80s, uh, but it's also a dating simulator. Uh, very 80s inspired, as you can tell by the music and the neon. Um, and so, uh, you work in the arcade, you meet some people at the arcade, and maybe you fall in love. And as Two Flower is saying in chat, best part, no temporary art this time. Yes! Real art, real deal stuff. So, without further ado, let's just jump right in, y'all. Let's get our dates on. Starting it up. Aw, oh, yeah. Let's do this. And my apologies if I'm a little sniffly this morning. It's a little early for me. Daylight savings, knock me out. The following is a work of fiction. <laughs> Anyone who played arcade games back in the days knows that. Winners don't use drugs. Oh, Reagan. All right. So, Arcade Spirits, written by Stefan Gagne. Gagne, Two Flower, I'm, I apologize for not being able to pronounce your name. And Anna Schumann. Copyright 2018. Wonderful. All right, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> here we have Iris. Hello! My name is Iris, and I'm your personal digital assistant. I'll be getting you ready to experience one day in the life of the exciting world of arcade management. I promise it'll be exciting. Really? Trust me. 99.97% .97 exciting minimum. But... Before we begin, can you please tell me a bit about yourself? Your name, what you like, that sort of thing. All right, is this character creation? Okay, cool. So one of the things that uh, Anna and Two Flower were really excited about in this game was that they added some uh, character creation. Uh, I like this, Ari, Kadir, he, she, they. So you can pick your pronoun, that's cool. Um, hairstyle, oh, neato. And then colors, ooh, neat. Um, I kind of like the default, honestly. I'm cool with that. Um, although, you know what, I might get confused with the pronouns. Um, do, 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 do. We'll go, we'll rock the green. Y'all know me. All right. Cool. We'll stick with that. Uh, all right. Let's do this. Done. All right. Name, Ari, uh, Cater. Pronoun, he. Is this correct? Yes. Let's do this. Yes, that's correct. Not enough VNs have character creation. Indeed, Two Flower. It's that little, it's that little bit of personalization makes it connected. Hey! Price is my fave. Already loving the style of this. Isn't the art so great? All right. Okay. For purposes of this demo, we'll jump you right into the middle of your first day on the job. Okay. What you want? What? You wanted training? <laughs> no time. It's sink or swim. Here we go. Oh, Iris, you adorable neon thing. It's the distant future, year 20XX, and yesterday I was unemployed. Oh, this is me. Today, I'm technically back in the working class. I can't believe I let that crazy girl app who lives on my phone talk me into this. I mean, I needed a job, but working in an arcade? Seriously? Here in 20XX, video arcades are pretty mainstream. Like, going out to the movies or grabbing pizza or something. Although, back in 198X, we were very narrowly, we very narrowly avoided a video game crash, which might have destroyed the whole industry. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. I wonder if there's some dystopian version of 20XX where that happened. Truly the darkest timeline. It's true. It's true. But actually working in an arcade is crazy. Like working in a landmine factory. Particularly a little mom-and-pop place like this one that could go bankrupt any day now. OMG, I love Francine! I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, dearie. Everybody here has a dream they're chasing. No doubt you'll find yours as well. Is what she told me when I joined on with Francine's arcade funplex. I don't know if working here is my dream, exactly. Truthfully, I haven't even been to an arcade in, uh, let's see... Flashback. 
15 years. But, well, how best can I put this? Aha! Choose a response based on your personality. So this is another part of the game. Uh, is when you make your choices, they all have like an emotional component to them. Um, or I guess it's a personality component. And so this kind of builds up the type of character that you are, right? Um, so you can be basic, gutsy, kind, steady, or quirky, right? So these are going to have their pluses and minuses. Why does the game sometimes hide the year like 20XX or 19XX? Oh, that's like a, a, that's a staple in these types of games. Uh, if you ever played Mega Man X, it takes place in the year 20XX. Um, because like that way you don't have to actually give a specific year. It's just 20 something. <laughs> All right. Is every kid's dream come true? I'm willing to take this seriously. I'm looking for hope after so long. Eh, why not? I can go with the flow. Um, we're going to be quirky. We're going to be a quirky character, y'all. This is every kid's dream come true! I'm working in an arcade. I'm surrounded by games, some seriously fun games. This is what every kid dreams about doing when they grow up. At least my first day has been pretty quiet. No customer service crises for me to deal with. Just a bunch of regulars playing their usual games, and of course, my coworkers. Hey, country girl, welcome to the stream. You'll be lurking, cool. I'm doing all right, doing all right. Just checking out this awesome game. Oh, yeah. OMG, you look so bored behind the counter. <laughs> oh, man. All right. May as well wander the floor a bit, see if anybody needs help. I'm just trying to like look around at all like the details. Snack runner. Oh, careful, snack. Snack. Pangy. I like that. Castle crunch. <laughs> these are great. Moopy. I love these games. <laughs> Who needs help? There's Naomi Fairchild, our techie. She fixes up these old 198X games, which are constantly breaking down. Hey, Naomi. Ah! Oh, Ari, it's you. Settling in okay? No problems? Did you have lunch yet? Can you pass me that multimeter before the power supply in this game melts down? Uh, sure. <laughs> here you go. Thanks. Figures it's quiet in here today, I'd do some work on the floor. <laughs> hmm, although I should probably go grab some replacement parts. Excuse me. Oh, next up is Percy Sinclair, our world record high score chasing champion. I mean, he hasn't nailed the record yet, but he's working on it. Hey, Percy, need anything? Snack? Some water? I'm making the rounds. Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. I'm quite well. Thank you. How long have you been standing there? Did you need to go to the bathroom eventually? <laughs> that's what extra lives are for. <laughs> I appreciate the concern, love, but I'll be just fine. Oh! Oh, that's right! He's British! That's what extra lives are for. I appreciate the concern, love, but I'll be just fine. Thanks for the inquiry, mind you. Alright, next, I swing by our Fist of Discomfort machine. <laughs> Rat! Rat just said Percy. I'm thirsty for Percy. <laughs> Alright. Next, I swing by our Fist of Discomfort machine, which always has some fierce competition going down between esports pros and wannabes. Whoa! Check him out. In case it wasn't clear, the one on the left is the pro, Queen B, representing L7 Gaming, a prestigious FOD team. FOD, Fist of Discomfort? That's such a good name. That's such a good name. She even uses a portable rig of webcams and lights to stream her matches over the internet. The Funplex is basically your personal broadcast studio. You need in Queen B? Doing rounds. No, I'm... Oh, come the... On! Oh, there's no way that is even possible. Those hitboxes don't even connect. Uh, who cares? This isn't a tournament. I'm tech in the win. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Not happening. Did I mention I happened to buy an extra ultimate technique scroll from the item store? Take this! What? How did you defeat me? No! Take that, Rando Calrissian. That's the best. <laughs> He died with the explosions. That's so good. Oh, man. Oh, GG, scrub. <laughs> Whoops, he's dead now. Ashley. Wow, Queen Bee's really going at him today. That's Ashley. She works the floor alongside me, solving any arcade -y type problems we find out there. Hmm. I wonder if her annihilating every single person who walks up to the game is really helping the arcade in the long run. 
You tell me. <laughs> I'm new here. I don't know anything about... Uh, like, anything. <laughs> At the very least, it's entertaining to watch. Hey, thanks for covering the floor. I need to head back and work on my pinky costume. The head keeps falling off. Cosplayer's work is never finished. <laughs> Ashley Wolf, away! <laughs> That's awesome. Marcidel, Queen Bee is the person I aspire to be. She's pretty wonderful. And lastly, we have our Spotlight Stage Dance Team Leader, Teo. Hello, hello! Having a lovely day? Not half as lovely as you, I should add. Who is a big ol' flirt. Just the rounds, like Gavin told me to do. <laughs> Nothing special going on. Well, if you ever want me to show me your moves, you know where to find me. <laughs> That's great. Oh, right. <laughs> How could I forget about Gavin? He's the business manager. Well, he doesn't own the place, but close enough. Mr. Cater. Mr. Cooper, I trust your first day is going well. No issues? All's quiet on the Western Front. Good, good. Only a few more hours till closing. With any luck, we can escape today in a reasonably profitable state and live to see another day. <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I got the head fix. Look, look. Ah, uh, yes. That's the semi-terrifying mascot of the Funplex. Pinky, the Funplex Flamingo. I nearly went into cardiac arrest the first time I saw that. <laughs> I played an original build of this game a while ago, and that was the jump scare moment, wasn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, goodness. Confused, is the main character male or female? I made, uh, I chose he as my pronouns just because I knew uh, I might get confused. Um, cause it's, you know, me being that, but, uh, you can pick he, she, or they as your pronouns. Um, you don't really see it for the cam. Oh, good call. Let's, uh, let's show it off for y'all. You got to see how great it is. Do, 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 do. Give me a second. Forgot I have everything set up in a weird way. Do, 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 do. Really important that you see this. What's going on? Come on. Webcam, face box, white box frame. There we go. That'll do it. All right. Uh, transition. There you go. Check that out. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's fantastic. Just going to let that sit there for a second. Just so you guys can enjoy it. Just so you can enjoy the little eye holes <laughs> that you couldn't quite see. All right, transitioning back. Uh, may have burst a gut laughing. I know, right, Dragon Clan? Isn't that like I was not ready? I was not ready. <laughs> Five nights at Ennis. <laughs> All right, may have went into cardiac arrest the first time I saw that. <sighs> Next time we've got a bunch of kids here, I'll be ready. And I'm happy to announce our joust is fixed at last. Uh, I didn't have to order a few more replacement parts for Gauntlet, though. <laughs> went down moments later. <laughs> Typical. Well, all in all, still not a bad day. Not a bad day, uh, first day for you, Ari. And that was my first day at Francine's Arcade Funplex. Hope you had fun. Game over. Just kidding. By the way, I've booked a birthday party for this afternoon. Uh, uh, what? Huh? The looks of confusion and outright terror on their faces all laughed. <laughs> faces all laughter dying off immediately are vaguely concerning to me. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'd meant to tell you, dears, but I plum forgot. Uh, birthday party? How old are the kids, may I ask? It's her fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. Five-year-olds? Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling. Throwing ski balls overhand into the plexiglass, jumping up and down on pinball machines, putting chewing gum into coin slots, pulling at my costume, tearing off pieces of it. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We survived kids' birthday parties before. 
Doom! Doom! The end is nigh! Well, I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. <laughs> Time for my afternoon nap, anyway. Have fun, dears! <laughs> right. Battle stations. Everyone. I'll take ticket desk so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. Ari, roaming duty. Look for trouble. Do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. Like an oncoming tidal wave, the rumble is felt before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disgorging kindergartners, and suddenly... Ah! Children. An explosion of small humans rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. Even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, mashing buttons, eager to get their game on, or even just pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations. Naomi, by the fragile pinball machines. Ashley, near the door, trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin, armed with pre-stacked $10 rolls of tokens, quickly exchanges them with the adults. Beats waiting in line at the change machines. As for the pro gamers, well... <laughs> Queen Bee and Teo's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them. Keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kitties, I guess. That's all very well and good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Roaming duty, Gavin said. Look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now... Now the chaos has multiplied. For a few minutes, I'm like a pinball being bounced around. Or like that frog trying to cross a highway of traffic. That frog, you know the one. Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise, and Ari, professional floor attendant, is ready to attend to them. Which one of these is the highest priority, though? I may not be able to deal with all of them in time. <gasps> Choices? Alright, two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley, a little girl crying by the redemption games near Percy and Gavin, or an angry adult shouting at a sobbing kid near Teo and Queen Bee. Ooh boy, this is where we have to make our choice about which relationship I assume we want to pursue in this instance. Naomi and Ashley, Percy and Gavin, Teo and Queen Bee. I mean... Come on. The sounds of hardship call to me from the Fast Cars 5 racing games. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope, beyond hope, that I can take this on. I shake the discomfort off. Now's not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on, and stat. As I get closer to the revving of engines and the clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. Aw, poor kid! I... I... didn't! Admit it. I know what you did, you brat. You manipulated my precious son to put his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm s s sorry Children like you are the absolute worst. Garbage! Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, no less. What's going on here? This jerk of a boy told my sweetest beyond sweet Josh that he should put in his own tokens into the racing machine so he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his own allowance, and I won't let some devil child steal his money. Let's just take a moment to calm down, okay? Before I say anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated, and Teo has buried his face in his hand. Actually, now that I stop to think about it, they might have some insight. The racing games are right next to a Showtime stage. Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing, if he was dancing on stage. And just by the way Queen Bee's brows are furrowed, I could tell something is not sitting right with her. I could ask one of them for help, or I could try to solve this one by myself. We're gonna consult Queen Bee. <laughs> Since Queen Bee's been consumed by rage, I bet she knows what's really going on here. I wave her over to join us. I attempt to reach out to her for guidance. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but I think that... That lady is a no good piece of... Nope. Not helping. This is, in fact, it goes farthest away from helping I could ever imagine. 
The kid runs away to avoid the crazy people as I try my best to defuse the situation. I, I... That boy did nothing wrong. Nothing. Um... Excuse me? Part... part uh... How dare you? There's no way I'm getting in a word between these two. I sigh and resign myself to watch it play out. <sighs> How dare I? How dare you for yelling at that kid? I don't care if he did what you claim or not. You've got no right to traumatize him over it. He's a thief, and you'll grow up to be a no-good criminal. That still doesn't matter! Do you honestly think, like, take a single second of your life and really think that shouting at a child is an effective way to handle this? Ugh! You can't tell me how I should act. That's not a real answer. Why not try asking the boy what happened before you jump down his throat? Shut up and listen before you assume you know everything. W what? That's not... Who do you think you are? I am the nemesis of evildoers. Writer of wrongs. The rising star of Lucky Seven. Queen Bee poses in her trademark pose. I am the one and only. Queen Bee! And in the name of the Funplex, I'll punish you! Well, I never! In all my years, you're far worse than that impudent child. Josh! Josh, get over here! We are leaving this horrible arcade. Right now! Well, <laughs> that's one way to handle it. <laughs> the woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or her son anymore, and frankly, I'm okay with that. Once they're gone, Queen Bee turns her attention back to me. Ugh! People like that really f me off. My blood is still boiling. Oh, and hey, thanks for the backup. Uh, you're welcome? I really didn't do much of anything. Yeah, well, I knew you had my back, kid. I can sense that you're like me. I can't stand to see people get screamed at. It sucks. Queen Bee's whole aura changed from her normal upbeat snark to being completely down in the dumps. This is a side of her I haven't seen yet. She just looks so sad. Queen Bee, are you doing okay? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna ask. Be empathetic. I know it's really none of my business, but I feel I should ask about this. Looks like the incident hit her hard. Hey, uh, Everything all right? It's okay. You can tell me. She pauses for a second before her normal smile creeps back on her lips. Yeah, I'll be fine. But hey, thanks for asking. I appreciate it, kid. Okay, show's over. You should go check on that boy. The boy! I totally forgot. You're right. I always am. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to try to squeeze in a few more matches before quitting time. I'm out, kid. She's like the Han Solo of this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kid. Queen Bee takes one more moment to triangulate the safest path back to Fist of Discomfort through a sea of children. After poking around a bit, I manage to find the kid, still shaken up from the whole ordeal. Hey, sorry about that. Are you going to be okay? Uh, I, I think so. I swear I didn't do anything. The other kid, he just came up out of nowhere and dropped his tokens in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. And then that woman approached you and started yelling? The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his sleeve. Uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady's gone. And I don't think she's going to ever come back. Especially after the way Queen Bee burned her. The boy, cheeks still streaked with tears, lets a smile spread on his face. Th thank you, and the other lady. Thanks for sticking up for me, too. I nod, and the boy scurries off and rejoins some of his other friends. Right. <laughs> That's that sorted out. But the other two situations are about to spin out of control. I've only got time to deal with one of them. Which one? All right, two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley, or a little girl crying by the Redemption Games near Percy and Gavin. Uh... It's a tough one. We'll go talk to Percy. I know a lot of people like Percy. All right. 
I weave my way through waves of children towards the skee-ball machines. One little girl sitting at the end of a skee-ball ramp, crying. No parent in sight to settle her. So, the task falls to me. I'm guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing. What with lawsuit-happy parents lurking over by the vending machines? <laughs> Ignoring their kids, but... Flora Tendinari decided to take the case all the same. Hey, hey, my, my name's Ari, and I work here at the arcade. What's wrong? Can, can I help? Her sobbing pauses as she looks up at me. I, 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 I lost my tickets. Someone stole them from me. I played and played and won a bunch of them, but then I put them down. And I was talking to a friend, and now they're gone. I glance around, but in a sea of kids, it's impossible to tell who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. I spent them all on ski ball and tickets, and the tickets are all gone. <laughs> easy, easy. We'll, we'll figure this out somehow. Although I've got no clue where to even start, to be honest. Maybe there's a witness to the crime. Percy would have had a good view of the redemption game area, based on where Moopy's positioned. Gavin has a ticket desk, a veritable crow's nest for the whole arcade. Could have spotted something. Or I could just bend the rules and solve this directly. Uh, maybe Percy saw something. I could deal with this quietly if he can identify the culprit. Okay, don't worry. I'll get your tickets back one way or another. <laughs> really, Mr. Ari? Wait right here. I'll be back in a jiff. I walk up to Percy, tapping him on the shoulder to get his attention. Hmm? Sorry to interrupt, but that girl in pink over there? Someone stole her tickets. I was hoping you saw something. Oh. Um. He frowns a little, looking slightly embarrassed. Sorry, love. I've been pretty deep into this run. Wasn't exactly paying attention. Poor girl. The ruffians absconded with her tickets, you say? Yeah, well, I can't exactly expect you to babysit. I'll just go check with Gavin. Now, now, no need for that. This obstacle can be removed rather readily, and perhaps be an object lesson as well. He steps away, letting his extra lives croak one by one. Something more important has clearly captured his attention. He's a good guy! Hello, my name's Percy. You say you need tickets? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get the colored crayons. Fifty tickets, if I recall. Tall order, but certainly achievable. Here, let me show you the best way to reach your goal. He leads our little group a short ways over to a game of colorful spinning lights. Skee-ball, even when played well, has an expected value of four tickets per token. But this game has an EV of eight. Ten, if you're sharp enough. He demonstrates, dropping in a token. The lights start swirling around and round, until he snaps out and pushes the single control button with perfect timing, capturing the light right between two pink goalposts. Uh, Jazz and Tomato just subbed with a tier one sub for 19 months in a row. Thank you so much, Jazz and Tomato. 12 tickets come streaming out of the slot, the maximum possible per token. Simple, yes. Here, I can spot you some tokens to get you started. He produces a short stack of brassy tokens from the ample supply in his pockets. But the girl just sort of stares at the game, confused. Now this game's really boring. Boring? It's got colorful lights, see? And it pays very well. But it's boring. I like Roy's ski balls in the halls. You want those crayons, yes? And this is the most efficient way to get them. The girl sighs, disappointed. But she's not crying anymore. The distraction was enough to crack her out of the feedback loop of despair, I guess. <laughs> she hands the tokens back, the stack clinking lightly into Percy's open hand. Thanks, mister. But I got other crayons at home. I guess I'll just use those. Not exactly cheered up. But not exactly weeping. She mixes back into the crown to crowd to find her way. Uh, ugh. She mixes back into the crowd to find her friends and play with them instead. Huh. Well, my apologies, Ari. Seems I've let you both down. Although I must confess to be rather puzzled by this. If you have a clear and distinct goal, what's so bad about accomplishing it by the most direct means? She's five. I think she cares more about fun than expected value. I'll admit my experience with children is unorthodox. I suppose it best to admit my failure in this moment and move on. <laughs> I let it ride, but curiosity takes me. Kid's got the spirit of a competitor. Skee-ball's more competitive than stuff like. 
But isn't playing Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze fun for you? Why else would you play it all the time? Let's do. Let's go for this one. Hang on. You spend all day, every day, playing Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze, and that doesn't offer any tickets or rewards of any sort. They saw our school. Right. But are you really only playing for the score? Surely you find the game itself fun. I mean, what drew you to Moopy in the first place? Why that game for your score challenge? That question puts him at unease. He pauses, unable to smoothly deliver an answer. It's a bit personal, really. Not that I'm offended, oh, no. <laughs> I just mean, it was a very personal decision to take up this particular challenge, this game. A mixture of nostalgia and a, and a promise to keep. He shakes his head. I suppose this isn't the time or place. Others need your help today, Ari. And this old man's got a game to get back to. But thank you for trying to help that girl. And thanks for allowing me to try to help, <laughs> even if we both struck out. It shows character. Percy returns to his game, having lost most of his extra lives, but doesn't seem to mind the setback. If anything, he's smiling more than he was a minute ago. Two problems in the can. Now, to deal with that cupcake problem, I... Oh. Uh-oh. Too late. The vintage joust cabinet Naomi just finished fixing up. It's covered in icing. Looks like Ashley's costume is going to need dry cleaning, too. I shoot them a helpless look and shrug. Hey, Ari. I kinda wish it was pink icing, but nobody would notice. Yeah, um, sorry about that. <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. You still helped out. I saw you with those other kids. You're a natural. I think things are winding down anyway. Why not take a break? And then I'll swap up with you and take a break myself afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Honestly, I'm kind of worn out. Ashley's right. I need to step away from the craziness, if only for a few minutes. After a silent nod from Gavin to confirm it's cool with him, I slip away. Headed for the employee lounge. Do do. Some hours later, from the cars pulling up in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have filed out by now. They hadn't fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug Gavin to finish up my employment paperwork, but, uh, that can wait. There's someone I'd like to visit before this day is through. Oh, look at that! Alright, so now you get to pick any of the people that we saw earlier to talk to. Let's see, Gavin's tapping at his tablet and frowning. Let's find out why. Ashley's quietly repairing her costume. Maybe she could use company. Naomi's prying gum out of a coin slot and looks ready to cry. Oh, no. Creamy's packing up her gear, ready to go home. Teo's cooling down with some Fast Cars 5 before the day's through, and Percy's finally finished his movie game and is ready to leave. I think that I gotta, gotta see what's up with Queen Bee. Gotta find out what's up with Queen Bee. Queen Bee looks like she's completely done for the day. There's an exasperated frown on her face as she shoves various webcams and mics into her bag. <laughs> she doesn't even notice me as I approach. <laughs> well, she exclaims. Careful, you don't want to break anything. Yeah, anarchy. You doing okay? Do you do it okay? Hey, you feeling all right, Queen Bee? Oh, I'm fine. I just get frustrated when I'm not playing at my best. And this is an appropriate response. Let the salt floweth. Oh no. <laughs> ha! Not exactly. I shouldn't be taking my anger out on my gear, but I just hate losing. And no Johns, but it's so hard to concentrate with a mass of children running around. Not that they aren't entitled to also have fun. The fun plex is for everyone. But when those sticky hands touch you and you aren't expecting it, it's scary. Also, all the yelling probably doesn't help either. Right? Why are they always yelling? But you win some, you lose some. Right, kid? Yeah, that's how I feel after today's shift. It was rough out there. Normally I'll leave when a gathering of that caliber's around, but I've got an important tournament coming up. I need all the practice I can get. Kids or no kids. But for your first day, you held your own. I'm impressed. Really? 
I've dealt with my fair share of brats and trolls roaming around here, and you certainly held yourself up to a higher standard than the last guy that worked here. That's good. Right? That's heckin' good. Oh, <laughs> that's heckin' good, kid. I think you'll fit in nicely among this crowd of misfits. <laughs> that's a relief. <laughs> I was worried people weren't going to accept me. If anyone gives you any trouble at all, you tell Queen Bee. I'll fight him. Really? That's really not necessary. I don't need people fisticuffing in my name. Gavin will most definitely fire me for that. <laughs> Although, thinking it over, I could see myself fighting for Queen Bee. I would pledge an oath of allegiance any day, what with her being arcade royalty and all. I, Ari, swear that I will be a faithful servant to Her Majesty Queen Bee and bear loyalty to all her lands, the FOD cabinets across the world. <laughs> oh, kid, you are too much. But you have a tenacity no other has shown me. I accept. I, Queen Bee of the Funplex, dub thee Sir Ari. Go forth and protect my territory from trolls and haters alike. No, seriously. I'm gonna mod you in my chat room so you can mute and ban any jerks you spot. One can never have too many moderators. It's true. Thank you, mods. We love your we love your work. <laughs> On my honor, my lady. Oh no! I could get way too used to this. But enough silliness. I, I have to get home and edit today's stream highlight reel. It's going to be such a long night for me. See you around, my knight. Queen Bee winks to me as she slings her bag over her shoulder, waves bye to all the lingerers, and swiftly exits the funplex. Oh my. And that was just my first day. Little did I know what would come after that. Haunted arcades, crowded game conventions, cosplay craziness, and cutthroat tournament competition. Not to mention the one rival who was waiting in the wings to swoop in and destroy the funplex once and for all. So, is this crazy arcade seriously my dream job? Maybe. I knew working in an arcade would be fun. You play games for a living. Well, you deal with people who are playing games for a living at least. Will the fun last? I don't know. But I'm willing to find out. Wouldn't you? And there we go. I think that's the demo, yep. And that's the demo of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you! Now, let's see your scores! Alright, what do we got here? Alright, so uh, you can't quite see it, but this bar over here is the same height as this uh, yellow one here. So, let's see. You're on Queen Bee's good side. Beats being on her bad side. Okay, cool. So we had like meters here that are measuring uh, the relationships that we developed. So obviously we had multiple encounters with Queen Bee. Um, and so this demo, obviously there's plenty more in this demo to check out. Let's see, what time is it right now? 10.45. Okay. Um, there's, you know, you could do all the different interactions with all the different characters. Um, beats being on her bad side. Also, you're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Finally, you've scored 1,900 points. Nice work. Hope you had fun. Oh, and if you let's play this game, let us know. We'd love to watch your video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks for playing Arcade Spirits, and I hope to see you again in the full game. Ah, it's great. Great stuff. So, we'll leave up this page for y'all to look at for a little bit. Um, but here's what I will say. Uh, this game is great. I love it. I love me some dating sims like this, and the writing is hilarious. The characters are wonderful. I think it's fantastic. Uh, yes, drop that link there, Nightbot. Thank you. Y'all can go check out ArcadeSpirits.com for any more info. Go follow at ArcadeSpiritsVN. Also follow Two Flower. Follow Enna. Go follow Backseat Gaming Bros. Um, and on Wednesday, y'all can play this game. So, you can get the public demo, you can play it yourself, you can try all the other ones that we didn't try out. We only did the Queen Bee mainline and like a like half of the Percy storyline. We didn't do anything with Teo, Naomi, with, uh, I can't remember, is Gavin and, who was the other girl's name? I want to say Wendy, but it's not Wendy, that's Scuba. Obviously, I didn't pay attention to that one. So, uh, <laughs> you can go pursue all the other relationships um, and check out all those parts of the demo. And then, support the game, follow the game, get the game. But uh, with that... Uh, my name has been Price. Thank you all on YouTube for watching this. And that's what we're going to call it for this playthrough of the demo. Hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. It's Ashley.